Let's talk to the face of bare knuckle fighting, the one and only Platinum Perry. Look at you, Mike. I mean, this is just unbelievable. You got your own bobblehead too? She. Yeah, Where'd you man, get that? I found it. You found it? Um, yeah, I had this sent to me years ago and it had all the tattoos on it and I had it in a storage unit. I even told you I was going to send it to you, but I hadn't found it for like a, two years. I found it, all the tattoos washed off, and I was looking at your bobbleheads and they all got gloves on. And I had this w made for me wow. way back, right? No gloves. Wow. No gloves. It's like the world knew, man. Unbelievable. The world. And I need a setup like Eddie, man. He's got a nice little office. He's got his belts up there and that. Yeah. You know, I'm doing this. I got this ghetto setup, you know, but you see. I kind of, but be honest, I, I I like the setup. Where are you at home right now? This is a different look than your usual setup. Yeah, this is my son's room, man. Got his pirate ship. Got the ocean <laughs> waves in the background, man. Uh, I love it. I'm, I love my son, and he inspires me so much. So I I guess I just started doing it in here. How how can we explain this, Mike? We were talking about this earlier. You know, towards the end of your UFC deal, the or run in the UFC, like it felt like you were a little bit all over. You were I wasn't. What has happened to you in the last two years, like the glow up, as they say, how you have and you're you're like a polished gem. You've matured. You're so good at selling these fights. Like what you and Luke did on Wednesday on the show was the amount of feedback I got from that. People like I know nothing about bare, bare knuckle, but I'm watching it just because of how entertaining they were, how comfortable you seem out there. We'll get to the Connor stuff in a minute, but like you are the face of this sport. How the hell did all this happen? Um. Man, it's it's um it's some type of destiny. Um, I've always loved boxing. Um, that's where I get my grit from. You know, I like to bite down on my mouthpiece, tuck my chin, and throw hands. And um, I was more, to be honest, I feel like I was more of a boxer in the sport of MMA, and I had a lot of success knocking guys out because I gave them the hands. And then when I got to the highest level, you know, I started facing better kickboxers, uh, guys who could really mix it up better. And of all the jujitsu training I've done, and and I'm I'm very skilled in other arts, but no matter what, when I got in the ring, in the cage, the octagon, whatever you want to call it, I have one thing on my mind, and I just want to punch you in the in the face or in the body. I I know how to land significant blows with my fists. And that's always been a passion of mine. I love boxing. I don't mind getting hit and, um, I use it to my advantage. And so you have this uh, dynamic with Luke, like, could you tell you guys were just the, the face-offs were fun. The way, like every, there was just something between you guys. Can you describe what it was? Cause I could tell there was animosity, but there also seemed to be some love between you guys. Um, you know, we've, I, I think a lot of fighters that have been fighting that have been in the, the, the ray of light that, um, you know, people have been paying attention to us fighting for years. We've come a long way. Um, things have, you know, I've really learned more how to be myself. Um, you know, and that's kind of how it is in the gym, right? Like I go to a gym and I'll get to spar these great guys, these names that people know all over the world. I, I work with tons of the greatest fighters. I mean, I've worked with John Jones. I mean, that's the best there is. So I've gotten to work with the greatest and um, behind closed doors. And it's like, you know, these guys, they, they're not sure about me, but I'm sure about me. I know that I'm talented. I know that I have skills in professionalism and in technique. I know that um, sometimes I may look a little, what cowboys say, unconventional. But um, Lyoto Machida said it about me. He said, Mike loves to brawl, but he's so technical at the same time uh, that I'm tough to deal with. And and this sport definitely suits me. I love the bare knuckle thing. Uh, it's boxing, but it's like, it's meaner than boxing because look what happens. I mean, I can just bust your teeth out of your mouth. You remember, you know, back when, when people's dads would argue, that's some shit like guys from the 60s, 50s, 70s, 80s would say, I'll bust your teeth out yeah. of your mouth. And look at that, man. I did it. When's the last time I was saying it's like it goes down in sports history, you know, 
it's unfortunate to use this as an example because that fight didn't go my way. But when my nose yeah. shifted across my face, that was like sports history. Um, the elbow, that was sports history. Um, and then there's there's always these knockouts or these shots that people get hit with that kind of goes down in the next the next setup for the next uh year of sports history and busting somebody's teeth out of their mouth was definitely one you know now i may say that and it sounds kind of hot or cringe or whatever uh, i appreciated luke um his gamesmanship his sportsmanship you know he wanted to push me around he wanted to try to treat me like a little brother and and i knew what i was getting into and i can't take anything away from myself because he hit me with some shots and it was just platinum being platinum in there. I just was ready for it. Um, he was big, strong. He was in shape. He made the weight. I mean, I competed against a two times former world champion, and I, I'm sitting here now with my belts at the crib, boy. Could you tell when his teeth like went in there? Like, can you feel that? Um, my knuckle. Oh my! Is. I got a couple stitches in my knuckle and all I know is that when I was in the fight, I was keeping my eyes on him and I knew I was like, Ooh, I landed a really good shot. I was like, I felt that in my fist, his teeth went into it for sure. <laughs> but I was just like, whatever that was, I can't wait to land that again and feel that again. I want to feel that in my knuckles again, whatever that was that I just hit him with. And after I hit him with it, he was defensive for about 30 more seconds there, moving around, sticking, trying to move, and he was not trying to get hit with that again. And then once we broke from that clinch, he was like, dude, I can't even bite down on this mouthpiece. Like, uh -huh. his teeth were all inside, and I, I was just like, oh, because, you know, I didn't. I wanted it, the win to look like right after I hit him, but he ate that shot. He took that shot, man. But then well, he was like, damn, I don't want to take it again. Oh, uh, we can hear we can hear this right here. This is Luke. Well, I'm just showing the video of uh of, of of Luke showing off his uh his battle wounds. You think he ever does this again? And look at that too. It's it's more than just uh the lip. It's more than just the teeth shot, yeah. you know? And yes, I caused that. I, I guess I hit him in the lip, which busted those teeth. It all went through. But look, he's got like two black eyes. Yep. He's got a lump on his face. So I hit him with more shots, but it's like I was hitting him so fast. It was hard for people to see where the shot happened, when it happened, why he quit. They were trying to discredit me. Oh, Luke just gave up. Listen, we were only two and a half, three minutes into this fight. And... I had already landed some significant damage that the people just couldn't even keep up with. Do you think he does this again? Well, he said he would, you know, some gloves would yeah. be preferable. Um, you know, it's not something that I would shy away from. If, if I expect a more dangerous fight in my future, I, ex you know, I made Luke look, easy or like he shouldn't have been in there with me but i know he's talented and a, and he's a beast so you know based on my attributes in this sport it's really you know like you said i'm the face of it and i'm grateful to be and um that's why i said what i said today i posted something on instagram and i said live up to the expectations because you know so many times in the past that uh, they expected me to do something and it just wasn't in the cards yet, but now it's my cards are on the table and um, it's the deck suits me. Do you agree that you're the face of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, Conor McGregor is like the damn face of combat sports. Everyone knows Conor McGregor. Everybody's mom knows Conor McGregor, everybody. So to get that face off with him, and it was, um, you know, there was a certain way to do it. And it, it happened just right uh, to to say, hey, can I get a face off with him? You know, it wasn't disrespectful. You got to respect what the guy's done in the sport. Um, now you can put some respect on what I've done in this sport. And um, it's intriguing to people, especially to people like Connor. He loves he loved it. He loved the show. He spoke highly of 
Bare Knuckle. The people who work for Bare Knuckle are all great. They all want to take this sport up because they know what we all sacrifice to compete in that event. And, um, you know, yes, I'm the face of it because I brought out the biggest face in combat sports and we got to have a little moment in the middle of the ring. And I want to ask you about that. But first, what was your reaction when you found out that he was there ringside? Um, so I was sitting up high in a skybox watching the event from from the top of the arena. Uh, that was where my my warm up room was. Um, and uh, then everybody starts cheering. We hear this lo- the crowd's going off, and like you know, I'm kind of in the zone. I'm going in between working out, sitting back down, and being calm, and watching some of the fights sometimes, and then. The crowd's going crazy, and then, you know, everyone gets excited, and then my team's like, oh, Conor McGregor's here. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's what's up. And it, it, I was already the favorite, so I was already thinking, I have to live up to the expectations. And then when Conor came, I was like, this is really an opportunity for me to live up to the expectations and do what everyone expects me to do. And I, I understand that Conor was there, and he watched – he got to watch two guys that he had beaten compete in the co-main event, but they were all there to see what the bigger two-time world champion up against this bare-knuckle street fighter who seems natural at this sport, uh, you know, how I could fare against that bigger competition and if weight classes really make that much of a difference. That's what we were all there to find out. And, um, I lived up to the expectations. And and going back to my previous point about everything just coming together for you, maybe a couple of years ago or maybe someone else who doesn't have your presence of mind is just saying like, what's up, Connor? Or like, hey, I'd love to fight. To have the presence of mind, to ask him to come in the way in which you did, and then to have the face off was just so brilliant. Was that something that you just thought of on the spot? Or did you say to yourself before, and if I win this fight, I'm going to call him out and bring him in there? I think uh, when he got there, I was like, my brain kind of started racking ideas of, you know, okay. And it's hard because, first of all, you're thinking, I need to focus and think on how I'm going to win this fight yeah, yeah. first. But then, it that, that's what I was saying. It's like, almost like a destiny, something that was, you know, I definitely had God's help. My brother, Michael Milmerstadt, recently... I told one of my longtime old coaches, my friend's father, who is like a father to me, he's been texting me. He was friends with Michael Milmerstad. And I told him, you know, Michael Milmerstad had to, he had to go up there and open up the gates for us. And um, now he's leading the path to our success. And, and he's, he's helping bring God on our side and really helping uh, lead the way for us. And, um, because it comes out how it comes out in the moment when it happens. It's all so fast up there. It's like, boom, 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 boom. You're done. You're out next. You know what I mean? And whatever can come out when it happens, it's like, I just kind of was like, man, can I get a face off with Conor McGregor? What's, what's a respectable way that you can maybe start a fight with a professional fighter in a professional manner not be disrespectful, not trying to talk so much trash. And you said it earlier, you got, I was like, what is the word for the feeling I'm feeling? And you said it. And I was like, that's it. I'm on cloud nine. So there was nothing that could get to me at that point. And then Connor comes in and it just, it made, I mean, he's how great of a guy to, you know, that just him entering the ring, just being there that night adds so much to the show Frozen. This is four for four in terms of uh, interviews that have gone frozen. Three for three. We're suspecting Zoom is having issues. Zoom? How dare they? It's the face of bare knuckle right there. Fits it like a glove. Is it four? Well, Feldman didn't have any issues. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right. yeah That'd be good. three for four then. No, mm, felt like four for four. But three in a row, right? 
we'll uh, we'll reconnect with uh, Platinum. I have a lot more to ask him about, including his future, because he said in the post fight press conference that he uh, he fought out his deal, and we asked David Feldman earlier if they're going to resign him, and he was pretty certain and quite absolute in saying that they are going to resign him. By the way, still to come in a little over 10 minutes time, we're going to be joined by Al Jermaine Sterling, the bantamweight champion of the UFC. You may have heard of him. He returns to action this Saturday at UFC 288 against Henry Cejudo, the return of Triple C, the King of Cringe, all that stuff. Uh, I prefer to just call him an Olympic gold medalist. I think we should lean in on that. Uh, Platinum is back, I believe. Mike, can you hear me? Yeah, we broke the internet, man. Uh, we broke the internet. I love what it. What did you guys hear? Uh, what did you hear? You said cloud nine, and then I lost you. Okay. You were on cloud nine. I was on cloud nine, and I was saying, you know, what are the chances about, you know, coming up with that idea to what's a respectable way to call out a high-level professional in this type of combat sport you know, and without being disrespectful, um, hey, man, can I get a face off? He comes in and I was saying, what a guy, you know, that he he just adds so much attention to such a great moment for me in my career. Uh, he added so much for the sport itself, for the corporation, the company, Bare Knuckle, just by being there. And then he gets in the ring with me and it just added so amazing. much positivity to that moment. Uh, what did you guys say to each other in the face-off? Um, so I was saying, you know, I, I was bringing up about Cowboy because I know he fought Cowboy after Cowboy armbarred me. Yeah. And uh, then he went out there and he he just, he had a plan and he made the plan work. He kicked him in the head, punched him down to the ground and finished him off. I, and, you know, I was like, you know, Cowboy took my arm. and. And uh, he's like, yeah, what do I do to him? And I was like, yeah, I know, man. You, you taught me a great lesson there. You know, I've learned from these great moments in my life and from the ups and the downs. And um, then, you know, from from watching great guys, great fighters, athletes like Connor and um, the the successes that he's had and how he's dealt with his failures as well. Some fights that didn't go his way, how he dealt with those things and um so and and then I said I know, and then he's like I'm never retiring. I said, hey, that helped me too. I saw that this week because my head was like, after what happened to my friend, I was like, man, you know, when I beat Luke, really, I will feel. I feel like this would have been an accomplishment that says I've accomplished all there is that I have set out to accomplish in this sport for me beating a former two-time world champion in the bigger weight class, da 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 And, um, but then I saw that Connor had said that and I was like, and I thought about my friend, you know, if he chased it so hard, he didn't know it was going to take him from his family, but it seems like, you know, he wanted it so badly. He would have done anything to, become a great fighter and be recognized as that. And, um, you know, when, and I've been, I, I listened to this song called Tequila Shots by Kid Cudi. And he's like, tell my mom, I'm sorry. And, um, and he's like, I'm never, you know, I'm not going to stop until I crash and burn. And that's the mentality. And, um, I'm in a place right now where I have the opportunity to do these great things, make this money for my family. And um, I'm great at it. I can, I'm fortunate to be able to take punches to the head like no one else we've ever seen. And, um, you know, I, I have to, I have to ride until the wheels fall off and I don't see the wheels falling off. I see myself being able to do this forever. Like I've always said, I used to say I would do this forever. I'm never going to stop fighting. I'll have to fight for everything from the rest of my life. But when I wake up in the morning, I'm fighting at the house. And I don't mean arguing with my family. I just mean like every day is a competition. It's a fight to be better. You, you fought out your deal and David Feldman told us that he wants you back and he's confident that you'll be back. Do you think you'll be back? Do you think you'll resign? I'm 
I'm confident that David Feldman and me, I mean, I have a great relationship with him. It's, it's very, it's very professional. Um, and it's business oriented and, uh, we both love the sport. I'm, you know, he loves the sport more than me because he started it and I'm really enjoying myself in this sport. I love the bar. I love how tough I am in bare knuckle. I'm just super tough to, to go up against. And I, and, and I, I get respect from some of their great champions. Um, these guys are real professional athletes and they want to be respected. They know they deserve respect for what they put themselves through to compete in this game. And, um, you know, you see a lot of guys on the come up in this sport and, uh, you know, some are well outmatched. Others are, you know, others are great fights. Like who expected the big Ben Rothwell fight to go as long as it did those guys hitting each other like that. So I'm interested to see what offers lie on the table. I am a contract killer for hire. And, um, I know that there's some big guns out there ranging and shooting for me. So David Feldman's definitely at the top of the list. I love the bare knuckle stuff. Um, other things that get me excited. I mean, Conor McGregor gets me excited and he's still a little bit to go on the UFC. If we're talking only two fights left, by the way, only two fights left with if, the UFC. It, well, I hope he goes out there, beats Chandler and then maybe, you know, pay-per-view main event. You think it's possible? You know, it's do you think in your feet? Because he, he, we're going to throw hands anyway. Do you whether, think no right now in, in your in your dreams in your vision? Do you think before it's all said and done, you're fighting Connor? We put up a tweet from you back in 2020. Uh, you quote tweeted something that I wrote. You were about to fight Robbie Lawler, and you said, "When I'm done with Robbie, let's go me versus Connors." You've been talking about this for a while. Do you believe in your heart of hearts that this is going to come to fruition? Absolutely, I do. It was, it was there. What was that? Last night or the night Saturday, before? Yeah, yeah, we was we were in the ring, man. And he was ready to punch me right then. <laughs> uh, but you know, th- I have. I don't know. I just it was my moment that night, you know. And and I got the last word because when Connor left the ring, um, you know, yeah, he had the belt, but like I got my belt, it's platinum over gold, baby, mm-hmm. and. When he left the ring, they put the mic back in my face. So it was my night to shine. I got the last word. I was grateful. I told Connor that as well after I mentioned my friend Michael Milmerstadt. I said, thank you so much for being here because I know what type of attention that brings in that moment. To And he was just trying to be very violent. He was ready to fight me right then. And I was just very calm-minded and, you know, grateful for the opportunity so it's a face-off but and he's talking about it on instagram he's posting about it he's he's interested in it yeah he knows it looked exciting he knows it looked fun they put on bare knuckle fc put on a great show and um i capped off the night can i tell you one that i want to throw out there platinum perry versus logan paul i like it i like it i like the tommy fury i like the logan paul i like the Conor McGregor, um, Jake, and I also like. Even though my boy's gonna have to show me something, he's gonna have to show me something, man, because he's on quite a skid. Darren Till, that's the one. He said we were meant to fight, and maybe it's been a long time coming. Just like you said a long time ago, I tweeted that yeah. for after Robbie, I would fight Conor. Things happen when you think they're you're getting closer to something it might be like 10 years down the road. So I think that was, you know, a few years back and now we're getting much closer to it being a possibility and my success, my living up to the expectations Saturday night really helped solidify that. You you think Darren would do bare knuckle? Yeah, I think he would because uh, David Feldman pays better than everybody I've seen. And I've been paid by it, but, um, and you know, he's telling them, Oh, make me an astronomical offer, but be, be serious. If you really want to fight if if he really wants to fight, if he does want to fight, if he wants to put that pressure on himself, if he wants to work out hard again, get back in the best shape and, 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 you know, try to 
try to believe in himself to beat this skid. And, um, you know, I have a little bit of experience, though. I got these three fights now. But I came in and fought someone who had nine fights, and I won. Eddie Alvarez beat Chad Mendez, who had a fight, and Eddie won. So, you know, fighting is fighting at the end of the day. I know Darren Till has hit people in the bars out there in the UK. He's been in street fights. It's a fight at the end of the day. Um, you know, I'm the fight. I'm the money fight. I've been saying this. Um, so, you know, let's get in, let's get some names that people are very interested in. Um, it's got to be worthwhile for everybody involved because you know it does. I mean, it's got to be me, my opponent, and the corporation all have to be happy. And that's why I have the greatest management team, first round management. They are killing the game. And I'm happy to be a part of it. When do you want to fight again? Uh, man, shortly. I could do it. I'm ready. I, I had so much left over, dude. I didn't sleep for like since the fight, I finally got some sleep last night. I was up to like 3 a.m. And then I woke and I had been up since the fight until wow. 3 a.m. last night. So I had just been pumping on adrenaline. I had all this energy pent up. And I that's why I was like, ah, like, I, ah, that's it. It's over. I wanted so much more. Huh. So, uh, you know, anytime, man, I just. You know, my knuckles got to heal up. I got to go take some antibiotics. But uh, in a few weeks, we'll see, man. All the offers got to hit the table. For sure. And and by the way, I'm very sorry about your friend. Um, Thank you. Uh, that, that, was it was it unexpected? Was it just a, a sudden thing? or Very unexpected. He was very talented. He was very strong, uh, powerful man. He was a police officer and a SWAT member. He... He, the community loved him. Everyone in the mixed martial arts community, um, he had so much support. His family has so much support from all of the police officers, the MMA community here in Central Florida. Um, everyone knew that that guy was super talented, and he started chasing his dream of fighting. He had he was a professional fighter for for years, but. He he had a skid when he started. His his debut was against a five and zero guy as a professional. He was zero and zero, and he fought a five and zero professional, and that kind of backtracked him. And he went off to become a police officer, and then became a SWAT member. And and listen, y'all know me. Everybody knows me. There's not a lot of cops that I would. I mean, listen, I don't have problems with police officers a lot of them help our community maybe some of them have done things that other people are like oh forget the pigs cop blah 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 listen i don't have beef like that especially not with such a power entity like the government police officers yeah but i'm just saying people know me and they know that there's not a lot of people i would speak up for that might be police officers and michael milmerstadt impacted his community so greatly the support that came through for him and his family when these terrible things started happening it was really out of nowhere no one expected this the guy has been training day in and day out for years and years and years he motivates everyone every day he, he had a a uh, phrase he liked to say was earn the day. He was always up working out, putting in miles, doing push-ups, lifting weights. Every day, this guy was working out his entire life. And it's the last thing anyone expected because he was one of the best of us, one of the toughest of us. And he just signed a contract to go have a professional fight. And he was so excited training with me for my boxing camp. And he was training at the MMA gym. He was putting in the hours. And uh, it's the last thing we all expected. I'm very he sorry. He leaves behind three little boys and oh. a wife. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, you represented well on Thank Saturday. You. And it's amazing to see everything come together for you as far as your career is concerned, Mike. So keep it going. Uh, everyone's very happy for you. 
congrats on all the success and, and good luck in this next chapter. Can't wait to see what you do next, my man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much, Hawani. Thank you, everybody. My sponsors, BKFC. Thank you, everybody who enjoyed the show. What Let's a go, Conor McGregor. Run that shit, dog. <laughs> there he is. Mike Perry, Platinum Ooh. Perry. Tremendous stuff.